Hello, my name is Andrew McNutt, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Chicago. When reading a visualization, is what we see really what we get? There are a lot of ways that visualizations can mislead us to appear to show us something interesting that disappears upon closer inspection. Today, I'm going to be talking about our paper, Surfacing Visualization Mirages, in which we introduce the notion of visualization mirage, describe the troubles they can cause, and provide a technique based on metamorphic testing to dispel a particularly quarrelsome class of mirages. This work was the product of a collaboration between me, as well as Gordon Kindleman and Michael Correll during my summer internship at Tableau Research. Now, what can we say about this humble bar chart? It appears that location B has about 50% more sales than location A. Is the store in location A underperforming? Well, given the magnitude of the difference, I bet your knee-jerk answer would be yes. Yet the reality of the situation can be much more complex. Many patterns can be hide behind aggregated data. It might have uh, outliers, it might have dirty data, it might have irregular population sizes, or a whole host of additional problems. Simple aggregations like our Hubble bar chart are at the foundation of many analytics tools, with subsequent analyses being built upon top of these potentially shaky grounds. As we'll discuss, problems like these are endemic to visual analysis, occurring at each stage in the pipeline. What are we to do about these problems? Should we stop analyzing data visually? Burn our computers? Well, the first step in addressing a problem is often to name it. So we introduce a term for these errors, visualization mirages. We define them to be any visualization where the cursory reading of visualization would appear to support a particular message arising from the data, but where a closer re-examination would remove or cast significant doubt upon the support. We conducted a literature review that yielded 83 different errors. And despite the magnitude of this list, it is not comprehensive. Mirages arise throughout visual analysis. They occur as the results of choices made about data. They come from design choices. They depend on what you're trying to do with the visualization. These mirages come in both familiar forms, such as outliers or overplotting, or the easily recalled availability heuristic, as well as less familiar ones, such as inappropriate or missing aggregation. For the full details of this list, please see the appendix of our paper. On the road to making a charter visualization, there are many steps and stages, each of which are liable to let error in. Consider a simplified pipeline model. An analyst decides how to curate data, how to wrangle it into a usable form, how to visually encode that data, and then finally how to actually read it. At each moment when the analyst exercises agency, they create an opportunity for error and they're in a mirage, which can cascade along this pipeline creating further illusory insights. Now let's look at a few concrete examples where things have gone wrong. Mirages can come from dirty data due to statistical or data entry errors. Sometimes as something as innocuous as defining the, the bins of a histogram or other bar chart can mask underlying data quality issues, which might in turn uh, lead to incorrect inferences about a trend. For instance, here it appears that sales are down in the fourth quarter of 2010. Yet upon closer inspection, we see that there are several months of missing data. Mirages can come from volatile visualizations, that is, those that don't reflect changes to their data, or cause the reader to hallucinate meaning. For instance, arbitrary choices about access ordering in a radar chart, which could cause a reader to falsely believe one job candidate is good while another is lacking. To wit, which of these two candidates is better? Answer, they are the same candidate. Mirages can come from creating visualizations with uncritical or unreflective eyes. For instance, decisions about uh, what type of crime actually counts as a crime can lead to maps that drive radically different impressions about the role of crime in a particular area. As here, a home buying website Trulia gives a radically different depiction of which parts of New York are dangerous compared to a similar map highlighting white collar crime. So now, maybe you're asking yourself, do these things really happen? Well, Let's consider a hypothetical analysis session. Say you're curious about the trend of global usage uh, in energy over time. A natural way to address these questions would be to fire up Tableau and drop in the World Indicators data set. The World Indicators data set consists of various vital world statistics from 2000 to 2012. This data set has been used for advocacy and to understand the trajectory of human development. We start by visualizing our data as a simple line chart. The trend over time in here shows that there's a sharp decrease in 2012. Great, job done. Or, or it would be done, uh, and it would be great news for the environment were it not illusory. As we can see on the right, uh, when checking the set of missing records. 
we try to quash these problems by switching the aggregation error line chart from sum to mean, uh, we find that the opposite is true. There is a sharp increase in 2012. Unfortunately, this is also a mirage. The only non-null entries for 2012 are OECD countries. These countries have much higher energy usage than other countries across all of these years. Now, given the irregularities, we can try removing 2012 from the data and focus on the gradual upward trend in energy usage in the rest of the data. As we can see on the left, it appears that energy usage is tightly correlated with average life expectancy. Perhaps more power means a happier life for everyone after all. Unfortunately, this too is a mirage. Uh, the y-axis of the chart has been altered to make the trends appear similar and obscures the fact that energy use is flat for most countries with two notable outliers. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, I'm very smart and visually literate, and I wouldn't fall for these mirages. Unfortunately, even those with high data literacy uh, tend to make mistakes, such as the case with the now infamous chart of gun deaths in Florida which upon first glance appears to show that the stand your ground law actually decreased gun deaths. But second glance reveals the opposite. The axis is pointed in the opposite direction from the conventional direction. This is another mirage. There are lots of additional ways that you might be deceived. For instance, visualizations are rhetorical devices that are easy to trust too deeply, which can cause the reader to miss subtleties or to accept questionable conclusions unquestioningly. Shoot, sometimes there are just times when you're tired and you miss something obvious. So instead of relying on the user to do everything for themselves, we can turn to computers for help. Alerting users to mirages is a great way to guide them towards safer visual analytics. Some mirages, like, re like the reversed axes we saw on the previous slide, are easy to detect. You simply query the function, uh, creating the visualization directly. Sim yet not all problems are so easy to find. Many chart types do not have ready-made guidelines or best practices to guide analysts. Mirages that lie at the intersection of visual encoding and data wrangling stages of our pipeline are much harder to detect. To address this, we turn to metamorphic testing, a testing methodology from software engineering that begins with the observation, you can't always test for the correctness of properties directly. That is, test oracles are not always available. In some cases, it can be easier to reason about correctness in relationship uh, to changes that, that is over symmetries. To put it graphically, uh, this technique begins by finding an example of normal behavior, uh, here the example data, uh, then feeding it through the system of interest after messing it up, and then finally uh, comparing the old and new outputs, which yields a binary pass-fail result. It is a test after all. One of my favorite examples of this technique is Donaldson et al.'s graphics fuzz, a metamorphic testing technique for compilers of shaders, uh, which are a special type of program for creating computer graphics. They start by taking a working shader uh, and then injecting hypothetically dead code into this working shader uh, and automatically compare the results. Now, this should hypothetically do nothing, but as we can see in these cases, it radically modifies the output. Uh, through this technique, they are able to catch a number of bugs in commercial shader compilers. We can start to apply this model to visualization problems by recalling Kindleman and Scheidegger's algebraic visualization design framework, which asserts, in the language of category theory, a good visualization will change significantly when significant changes to its inputs are made. Similarly, when an insignificant change is made, then there should be, correspondingly, no visual change. This turns out to be isomorphic to Donaldson et al.'s formulation of metamorphic testing, as we can see here. We combine these into a metamorphic testing for visualization, here written both graphically uh, above as well as in pseudo Haskell below. We note that these assertions are parameterized by the way that data is changed, alpha, the way that the output is modified, omega, and the way that these are compared, equality. We believe this technique would be effective when used in conjunction with other methods, such as data verification, direct vis verification, and of course, healthy skepticism. To test the validity of this technique, we built a proof of concept system that applied a me metamorphic testing for visualization to a simple static subset of Vega Lite charts. Vega Lite is a charting library that implements the grammar of graphics through a static and machine friendly API, which makes it easier for our system to automatically reason about metamorphic assertions. Now, let's see this technique in action. Now, the order in which uh, you draw the dots in a scatter plot shouldn't matter, right? Uh, yet, depending on the data set, it often can. 
This can erase data classes or cause false inferences. We can test for this property by shuffling the order of the input data and then doing a pixel difference between the two images. If the problem is above, uh, if the difference is above a certain threshold, we know that there may be a problem. This is the essence of our technique. For a particular data set, execute a change that should have a predictable result, here no change, and compare the results. We can also test via visual changes. Uh, for instance, here we uh, expect that if we change the opacity of the bars uh, in this bar chart, then we should get roughly the same chart with slightly opaque bars. Yet, in this case, that assertion fails, revealing a problem. In particular, the one, uh, that one of the authors uh, of this paper forgot to select an aggregation function, and so all of the bars were simply drawn on top of each other, doing an implicit max aggregation. Also, a fine chart, if chosen explicitly, the ambiguity uh, created here will likely lead to a mirage. Testing through data manipulation can be made more effective in some scenarios by taking a statistical view. For instance, here we are investigating whether the insight displayed in our bar chart are from the top of the talk is robust. To answer this question, we can bootstrap within our data classes. That is, within A and B, we find that no matter how many bootstraps we run, we always find that the bars have the same ordinal relationship. That is, A is less than B. This suggests that the insight is robust. No test failure. Uh, what about the second example, where the aggregation was predominantly driven by an outlier? Well, bootstrapping with uh, in the marks shows that the insight was only that the insight only held up about two thirds of the time. An assertion failure. This doesn't seem to be a good basis on which to make decisions. Uh, while it's still in early development, we find that this approach can effectively catch a wide array of visualization errors that occur when matching encoding to data. The full space of visualization mirage is vast and covers complex ground like critical reasoning, cognitive biases, and inequality. There are some mirages that may never be amenable to testing or verification, especially not in, not in as straightforward as a way as issues driven by outliers or sampling errors. Visualizations and the people who create them are prone to failure in subtle and difficult ways. We believe that visual analytic systems should do more to protect their users from themselves that these systems should help their users have justified and accurate confidence in their conclusions. One way these systems can do this is to surface visualization mirages to their users as part of the analytics process, which hopefully will guide users towards safer and more effective analyses. Applying our metamorphic testing for visualization approach is just one tool in the visualization validation toolbox, though of course there are others, such as directly validating charting specifications. The right interface to effectively convey validations is still unknown, although applying a metaphor of software linting seems promising. And with that, I will conclude my talk. I'd be happy to take any questions. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, thanks to Tableau Research for funding this work, and thanks to you for your time and attention.